Yep. Trying out this new trail. <laughs> Let's see what see what we got. Oh Missy Dog. Yeah? <laughs> what you finding outside? Alright. Got some good snow up here. Look at this view. I need to concentrate on driving. It's like a sheer cliff. It only drops like a thousand feet. Oh well. <laughs> now we can see the view. Huh, oh, Missy? That's like a, uh, there's a, you can't really see it in the camera, but there's a lake down there. Pretty cool. Looks like it's all frozen though. Looks like a lake. I don't know. It's beautiful out here. This is where I need to get just a couple acres. Just off the road a little bit. Just a little clearing. Yeah, just a couple acres. All right, back to driving. Yeah, I wish uh, I had a altimeter. I'll have to look up this evening when I get home to see how high we are, but we're getting pretty far up there. Well, we're getting up there in the mountain, which is good. That's what I wanted. I've never been up here before. It's pretty interesting. You know, a little after four o'clock and it's already <laughs> getting dark. Everything's gone behind the mountain, so beautiful country and uh, just typical mountain air. Reminds me a lot of like Colorado. Uh, I, mean, I think I, I think I like it up here more. I think uh, Montana's got Colorado beat. But uh, yeah, don't tell anyone. slowly we're still climbing we're doing a yeah steady five six percent grade but uh yeah road's pretty solid i've just been in two-wheel drive you know seems to be doing pretty good radio on this new little setup uh, yeah got everything hooked up and pretty well set you know it's kind of where I like it I'm gonna move a few things around but I went ahead and hooked up the auxiliary power for down here. I've got a USB C and USB A connector for charging. And I went ahead and wired that up today once it got above 20 degrees outside, which it's not anymore. But uh did that today, so that was that was fun. I still need to wire up the lights for those switches so they come on with the dash lights. And then I uh, just need to finish wiring up the lockers. I mean, I can still use my lockers, but I have to use it in the factory setting right now. You have to be at four low. Uh, the super chips overrides it. I just, I hate using it. Uh, it just doesn't seem to, I don't know, maybe it's just me. Uh, but once I get that override good, I'm gonna order two more, two more indicator lights, real small ones like that. So uh, 
I found out how to tap into the actuator so when the circuit closes and the locker is actuated, I'm going to send it to, uh, to turn on the indicator light because uh, uh, as they're going to be wired up, they'll only flash. And so in the stock mode, when it's flashing, that means it's engaging or disengaging. It, it doesn't mean that it's locked. So you, you never know truly if it's locked or not because you're operating outside of the vehicle parameters, outside of the, the canvas system for that. Anyway, that's just a little bit of geek knowledge. But uh, yeah, I want to get it all set up so I can throw my lockers on, you know, and too high if I want to or four high because uh, there are situations, especially in the in the snow when you do need a good run and start and four low just doesn't cut it. You know, I, I want to be able to still use my lockers. But at that and uh, ordered um, some suspension components because my front end's about shot. So I had to order, uh, I put in the new drag link. I got that, that was a move, that was in stock. Then I ordered a uh, one ton tie rod uh, through Apex, Apex off-road. Talked to the owner for for quite a while on the phone. Real, real, real nice guy. Uh, gave me the lowdown of everything and was giving me a lowdown of you know his product com compared to other products. Uh, it's they're not rebuildable ball joints, but the way that they're built and everything and engineered makes perfect sense and. They will definitely last longer and they're definitely a heck of a lot cheaper than those rebuildable ball joints, the initial cost. In case you didn't know, it's about 700 bucks, the initial cost. And then they're about 150 to 180 per rebuild for all four, which is astronomically less expensive. But, you know, if you're having to rebuild them every year, you know, you're spending a lot of money. And um, with these, uh, the, my driving style and what I do, we're projecting about five plus years out of them. And they're $200 for all four. Or 220, two, 200 with my military discount. So to me, that just made more sense. And I'm going to try them out. And, um, but I also bought his one ton steering or tie rod setup. He's got up to two and a half ton for Jeeps. It's pretty cool. But, uh, he's been in business since 93, but. Yeah, check him out if you want. You know, he gives military discounts. He's a real personal guy. He'll he'll call you on the phone if if need be. But uh, not paid, not sponsored. Didn't promise anything. But you know, I like to give people that are running good businesses shout outs. And uh, the same with Metal Cloak. Uh, they're out of California. Keep telling them to sell that location in California and move out to Montana. Uh, apparently. Half of the staff would like to, and the other half would not. <laughs> but uh, they run very good quality products. I bought a few of their things earlier last year, and uh, top notch quality, 100% top notch. You pay for it, but you're buying quality, and they back it. Uh, made in USA, you know. Uh, so uh, they're they're another good one. But anyway, uh, I'm going to drive for a little bit more and, and uh, see what we can't find. Alrighty. Well, hold on. What is this? Oh, okay. I-15 is that way. Oh, you can't see it. <laughs> I-15's that way. Butte's that way. This is cool. Let me check the maps. Let me get out of the sun. Let me check the maps and uh, make up my mind where to go. Which, oh man, maybe that goes up there. That'd be cool. Uh, time to check the map. There we go. This is easier than holding it. But uh, <laughs> Missy, the co-pilot, said, hey, go for it. So we're going to go up this trail a little bit. Snow's getting deeper, which is a good sign. I like that. And uh, we're just going to drive up there. It looks like it dead, dead ends in a few miles. Might go all the way to the dead end. Still got probably an hour of daylight left, but... Uh, back to talking about Jeeps. <laughs> um, 
was able to save up some money and um, actually was given some money for my birthday but uh, actually uh, bought some uh, off-road lights which have been a game changer I bought a pair of amber uh, floodlights which I mean these LEDs nowadays holy crap I think they're 90 watt LEDs and I mean it just man just brightens everything up uh, and what's nice is in winter time in the snow it doesn't reflect the light back at you so you're not you know getting that reflection of light off the snow uh, it makes seeing at night so much easier uh, can't really use them in town you know because they're so doggone bright they're not DOT but uh, I also bought a pair of um, of clear floodlights same thing same brand ox beam they're also 90 watt and uh so i got kind of like the best of both worlds and i think what i'm going to do now this time is save up i'm going to replace my fog lights with some ambers and um go that route because man after using these amber floodlights like there is just there's nothing better uh, that that white light just reflects back too much and um so it makes, it makes seeing at night a lot easier. And you know, when I'm, which I rarely am, but when I am out at night, you know, on these trails and whatnot, I just, I flip those on and it's just like daylight all over again. You know, I, these these Jeep lights, anyone that has a current Jeep, uh, a Wrangler, you know, JK or JL, and doesn't have the LED package, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's like holding a candle out. You know, it's just they're worthless. I, I don't even I don't even know why they fool around with regular lights. They should just all of them should just be LED. You know. Uh, because you can't see squat. And I mean even in town it's difficult. I have a difficult time seeing at night with these lights, so but I don't have like an extra, you know, like 600 bucks burning a hole in my pocket to upgrade them to LED. So that is definitely on the back burner for a while. And you know what? I passed a sign. It's too busy yakking. Both of these trails dead end. That one goes down. This one, well, we'll go straight. Anyway, uh, yeah. So, you know, the winter up here has been very mild. It's been very warm this winter. And um, compared to last winter, you know, where we had several, you know, several good days in the negatives. But uh, here, I mean, this is like the coldest it's ever, it's been, you know, during the day and it's 16 degrees right now. So it's pretty weak, but, uh, you know, you never know. It might hit us late, late winter, but, uh, our snowpack from what I've been reading and seeing, I haven't bought the new farmer's almanac yet, but our snowpack, we've fallen, we're behind this year by a considerable amount. So that's kind of a concern for some people, um, you know, cause we depend on that, you know, during the summer months and whatnot. And, um, we didn't have a bad fire season this last summer, which, you know, I don't know if we don't get a lot of, a lot more snowfall, you know, to keep that ground uh, damp, you know, and full of moisture, uh, we might have a bad fire season this summer. So who knows? But, you know, it's, oh, hey, can't you guys see this? That's pretty cool. Just beautiful stuff like this. I mean, this is in my backyard. You know, and uh, what am I like? Not even 15 miles from town, probably 15 miles from my house. You know, this. so this is in my backyard. And, I think it's pretty cool. Somebody's been trailing through there. But um, 
Yeah, I'm gonna follow this up for a little bit longer. Doesn't look like anyone's been through here today. Looks like I passed a side by side coming up here. Looks like he just he turned around in a field and went back. He didn't even have a windshield, man. No windshield, no doors. That's gotta be cold. You know, what's pretty cool around here is uh, you can you can drive those. Oh, that's neat. You can drive those in town and everything. Yeah. All it has to have is a mirror and uh, of course lights, but uh, yeah, they have little tiny like motorcycle tags for them, permanent plates. And yeah, you can drive them all over town. kind of a compared to Texas it's a totally different world up here which I like but, all right looks like we're gonna go back up this hill Outside? You wanna go outside? I don't know. Look at all that snow. Ooh. Yeah? You wanna go outside? Okay. Go get it, crackhead. <laughs> no boots on today. Sheared her shoulder yesterday. It's the same shoulder that's been injured. Um, just can't get that doggone thing to heal. <sighs> a vet visit is in our near future again. But um, she was limping a lot last night. And uh, this morning. But... She'll be fine. She'll she'll get there. We'll get her fixed. Full moon. Yeah. Yeah, this is cool. Definitely. Well, she got cold feet, literally. Uh, I didn't bring her shoes, her boots, e e any, either one of them I didn't bring. Uh, I didn't plan on really getting out and doing anything, which I should know better. Let's just go ahead and keep a pair here in the vehicle. But, uh, yeah, so we're going to travel some more of this trail, see where it leads. That's pretty cool. Just beautiful stuff like this. I mean, this is in my backyard. You know, and uh, what am I like? Not even 15 miles from town, probably 15 miles from my house. You know, this. so this is in my backyard. And, I think it's pretty cool. Somebody's been trailing through there. But, um, yeah, I'm gonna follow this up for a little bit longer. Doesn't look like anyone's been through here today. Looks like 
I passed a side by side coming up here. Looks like he just he turned around in a field and went back. He didn't even have a windshield, man. No windshield, no doors. That's got to be cold. Yeah, what's pretty cool around here is uh, you can you can drive those. Oh, that's neat. You can drive those in town and everything. Yeah. All it has to have is a mirror and, uh, of course, lights. But, uh, yeah, they have little tiny, like, motorcycle tags for them, permanent plates. And, yeah, you can drive them all over town. It's kind of a, compared to Texas, it's a totally different world up here, which I like. hill the entire time. She's got her head hanging out. All right. You want outside? You want to go outside? I don't know. Look at all that snow. Ooh. Yeah? You want to go outside? Okay. Go get it, crackhead. <laughs> No boots on today. Sheared her shoulder yesterday. It's the same shoulder that's been injured. Um, just can't get that doggone thing to heal. A vet visit is in our near future again. But um, she was limping a lot last night. And uh, this morning, but she'll be fine. She'll she'll get there. We'll get her fixed. Full moon. Yeah. Yeah. This is cool. Definitely. Well, she got cold feet, literally. Uh, I didn't bring her shoes, her boots, e e any, either one of them I didn't bring. Uh, I didn't plan on really getting out and doing anything, which I should know better. Let's just go ahead and keep a pair here in the vehicle. But, uh, yeah, so we're going to travel some more of this trail, see where it leads. Hopefully I don't have to back out of this whole thing. There's a place I can turn around at the dead end. But yeah. I know the camera never does it justice. You can't see the angles. And how steep things are. The sky is beautiful. Alright. Focus on this. Coming 
into a little clearing. Someone's been down here the last 24 hours. They don't look too fresh. Fresh enough. Yeah, I'm off the map. There's no trails identified through this, but this is pretty cool. trying not to be too ballsy because I am by myself. Of course there's a lot of trees to winch off of if I if I'd ever need it. So that's good. But still getting unstuck is not in the agenda for this afternoon or evening. Okay, so unfortunately, no. <laughs> no, it's not going in the right general direction. I mean, I could get there from here, but it would probably take me like four plus hours. It's like a whole day trip. So I'm gonna go ahead and spin it around here in this little clearing and uh, get back. It's gonna take me probably about two hours to get home or an hour and a half or so. That's all right, and no rush today. You know, I do have some recovery gear, but you know, I I didn't bring everything. You know, I used to. I'm sorry. I I generally like to carry you know a couple gallons of water and emergency food. You know stuff like that and uh, I didn't grab that bag so I grabbed all the other bag of just recovery gear so yeah I'm just gonna go home it's been fun I've marked this on the map so I know where I've been and uh, I'm gonna continue this next time next time I go out uh, I'm gonna gear up possibly uh, grab some fuel cans because you never know but, uh, all right I'm gonna navigate this and crawl back up this mountain get back on that main road hi all right well we're back on the main road I just went ahead and put in a waypoint there uh, so I can navigate to it next time if I get turned around but uh yeah, I want to continue down that trail. It's like a day adventure going through that. And I'll have to look at it more in detail and plan a route for next time. It's better to go in there with a plan. Now I know that this stuff is easily right down the road. You know, I can plan a, a day off and, um, you know, start out first thing in the morning and uh, spend all day and you know, cook some lunch and stuff like that outside. That'd be a fun just day off. But, um, yeah, so driving back down this main road, I think the sign said that go down this other way and it's like 15 more miles to Butte, I think. Something like that. But, uh, yeah, another route that I haven't been. The snow dog. 